In this clip, Jeff Skunk Baxter talks about the different producers that he's worked with. Gary Katz with Steely Dan and Ted Templeman with the Doobie Brothers. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Uh, Gary was very hands-off, whereas Ted was uh, always engaged. Because being a musician himself uh, and having a good grasp of music as well as as his visions of production uh he was he was very engaged uh don't stop to watch the wheels uh minute by minute one of my favorite tracks off off that album anything you can share about that tune uh no other than i just by that time the band was so musically focused and this is not to say that the band was never musically focused. I don't want to give that impression. But when I, when I, after I brought Michael into the band and we started doing, uh, expanding the musical horizons of the band, I had suggested to everyone that members of the band and the band as a whole work as a rhythm section in the studio for, for other artists. Because being a studio rat myself, I felt that there was a, a certain discipline that was good about that. And the fact that everybody in that band was a, an exceptional musician, I don't, when I say they hadn't reached their potential, I don't mean that they hadn't done an excellent job in, in every uh, musical endeavor that they had participated in. But sometimes you meet people that have more to offer and i think everybody in that band did so i started booking sessions with them as a rhythm section with leo sayer and um uh, and ted booked with carly simon and uh, uh, uh hoyt axton and to me there was something uh important in the lessons that you learn when i don't care what band you're in Downbeats at nine o'clock. Show up at eight, get your gears set up, downbeat at nine. Here's the chart. Hear the click, let's go. And if you screw it up, you're fired. The discipline of that not being, oh, I love your music and you're such a great rock star. No, I don't care who you are. Downbeats at nine. Play it right. And I think what that did is give everyone a sense of the studio that they hadn't had before, opened up their horizons. I remember Keith Knudsen one time, we were listening back to something on the Minute by Minute record. And no, it was, it was on the Living on the Fault Line record, which I think was an amazing record. Um, someday people, I think, will appreciate how cool that is. Yeah, uh, very exploratory. So Keith said, oh, God, I dropped, I dropped a snare drum beat in bar 51. I went, bingo. Bingo. Now, you see, before it was, oh, what a great track. We had a great time. Oh, I was really rocking. No, I dropped a snare drum beat in bar 51. The mindset of that way to listen to things and that way to approach was, to me, where I thought everybody should go because they could. Everybody was such an excellent musician. Are you, uh, um, first of all, did your parents both, uh, are your parents around or your mother's not, you said? Right. No, my, mo my mom passed away uh, a few years ago. My dad passed away about 12, 13 years ago. Sorry. The, the, no, the, no, I appreciate it. Uh, so did they get a chance to see you working for the government? My dad did, absolutely. What was his reaction? Well, um, it was extremely happy for me. Yeah. And what was interesting, and I'm not going to get into a lot of details because we're talking about things that are classified and stuff, but I never knew what my dad really did because I didn't have any clearances when I was a kid. Then <clears throat> when he retired, he didn't have any clearances, and I couldn't tell him what I was doing. <laughs> so... 
a four-star general, or he's a three-star at the time. Uh, I went to him and I said, sir, can, uh, if I give you my dad's DD-214, which is his, um, his uh, 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 Department of Defense uh, documents, can you get him a high-level security clearance for 24 hours? And he said, sure, I'll do it. So then my dad and I went into a SCIF, which is a secure compartmentalized intelligence facility, and sat down and started to talk. And it was amazing. I had no idea. And he had no idea. And then, of course, I took him, when I took him to the Pentagon a couple of times when, you know, when I was there, and, and people are walking down the hall, I go, hey, Lloyd, how are you doing? I'm going, oh, man. All right. I, we got to talk. We gotta oh, my talk. God. We got to talk. That's great. When when you were with the well, the Doobie Brothers and Steely Dan stages, were you reading as much then? Yes. Really? Yeah, I love to read, and <clears throat> it's just what. And if I have a question, I guess now people go on the internet as much as possible and try to find the answers. But at the time, there was really no internet other than what was happening over at ARPA and um, and the and the national labs. So it was books, 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 books. More from Jeff Skunk Baxter coming up in the next two, three days. So share our videos, like them, subscribe to our channel and comment on them as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care.